Hey everyone. Good morning. Okay. So if you are at that point in the year, we're almost into December and uh, the honeymoon period has worn off with homework and schoolwork, all of that type of stuff, whether your child's in school, being homeschooled or something in between, um, homework can definitely feel like the worst part of the day for both you and your kiddo. So I wanted to talk about what are the top three causes of homework battles, particularly among kids who have learning difficulties, ADHD and all that type of stuff, and how to approach that so that your child is um, in a more receptive state. So basically it can be a total nightmare for kids whenever they have to do homework or schoolwork and they can't self-regulate, they can't focus. Maybe they have crazy anxiety. Maybe they have OCD or tics that are affecting them. This is the type of stuff that often gets overlooked looked at me often think that homework battles is just something that pertains to, um, you know, learning difficulties and so forth. And you can try all of the typical stuff like bribing and begging and threatening. Let me know if you've tried all those things, those things or what things you have tried. Um, whether it, and, and whether it takes one hour or two hours to get the homework done, it can feel like a total and utter ordeal. So, so much mental energy can go into this. I talk to moms who say, I'm already thinking about homework at 10 a.m. in the morning. I'm already dreading the evening battle. It's really starting to, you know, weigh on them and so forth. So reason number one that homework, ba homework battles can arise or schoolwork battles can arise is your child is struggling with low self-esteem and low self-worth, which you might already know. Um, you know, and these kids, when that happens are very prone to just wanting to shut down because they don't want to do something or complete a task or even attempt a task that's going to make them feel worse about themselves. It's going to cause them to feel, um, you know, like they just have lower, even lower self-esteem. That's going to give them that sense of failure. So shutting down is actually a way that they use to protect themselves from those feelings of failure and low self-worth. And what tends to go with this sense of this, the shutdown and you might be, you might see this, let me know in the comments if you see this, is a sense of perfectionism that's just really over the top where they are really hard on themselves if they don't do something perfectly or they won't attempt something unless they can do it perfectly. And this ties into low self-esteem. A lot of parents will tell me that my child's a real perfectionist, even though they really struggle with learning disabilities, but it's creating so much anxiety. And I want them to understand that perfectionism is not a personality trait. And that pertains to everyone. Per perfectionism is a compensation, is a way of, um, you know, basically dealing with the sense of low self-worth. So that's definitely something that, um, you know, you want to be aware of. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute in terms of how we can kind of address that. Reason number two is poor focus um, and high energy kids. So this is just something that we really, you know, overlook. Kids sit so much today. They sit on the bus. They sit in school all day. Um, kids are, you know, sitting just in front of screens more, all of that type of stuff, no judgment, but these kids need front loading before we expect them to sit down and do more schoolwork, especially if they spent a whole day at school. Um, they need to, you know, have ways to release that energy. They need tools in their toolkit that they can do before you start the schoolwork. Otherwise they're going to, you know, most likely explode at the table over the little things because they just have so much pent up energy. Number three is frustration because of these learning difficulties. So, Adding on to that sense of failure and low self-worth, when learning difficulties become chronic, there can be what I like to call a reading or learning trauma. And I, this is a very, very real thing. So it's not just a matter of sitting down with kids at the same time every night and having a designated homework corner and a quiet space and all those things we read about in parenting magazines. These kids are in a state of fight or flight whenever they have to do anything academic. And so that is going to, in some kids that might look like they're running away and other kids, they might explode all of that type of stuff. But the key is to get them out of fight or flight, which I will be talking about as well this Friday when I do my uh, free training, no more homework battles. So things you want to avoid things. I just a few tips that I'm going to dive into today. I'll be going deeper into stuff on Friday, but you want to bypass focusing on results and over praise and so you don't want to say things like you're so smart or wow, you did that perfectly. B basically, because when you praise something like you're so smart or you did that perfectly or, you know, you're so bright, this can feel like more pressure for these kids who already are under a lot of pressure and feeling like they're not, you know, they're not succeeding, like they're failing and praise whenever we're praising something they 
that is very obscure can feel like something they can't control. And this will, this will cause them to shut down. And this is what will lead to perfectionism. I was guilty of this when my daughter was younger. I would always say, you're so smart. You're so bright. And she became more and more perfectionistic. Instead, I learned and I advise parents to do the same is to focus on their skills. So focus on how hard they tried, focus on how much patience they had doing their work, focus on how carefully they, you know, took the time to, to write their words out or whatever it is they're doing. Um, you know, how they stayed calm, how they had a great attitude, even though maybe they had enough, a rough night reading. So focusing on something that they can do in terms of a skill and not something obscure, because what does it really mean to be smart? I personally believe everybody is smart in different ways. Um, and so we want to not just have these general um, over praising of general, um, you know, traits and so forth. So focusing on skills should be your goal for homework, not academic results. And that's going to actually help build their resilience and build their toolkit of how to handle and approach challenges. So I would really want to focus if your child is having a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of stress around homework to just focus on making homework a exercise in practicing how to stay calm, how to work through frustration, how to, you know, be patient and compassionate with ourselves when we're not getting to where we want to go. So I'm going to be talking more in much more detail about what you can do to front load your child to prevent homework battles, how to get them out of fight or flight before they start homework and hopefully the rest of the day as well. Um, biochemical things you can do with nutrition and food, believe it or not, and supplements and so forth, as well as how to address the root cause. And I'm going to be talking all about that on Friday with my no more homework battles uh, training. I will put the link for that in the comments below or just send me a message and I'll send you the link for it. So that's Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern. If you can't attend, a replay will be sent out to everybody who registers. So thanks for watching, everyone. And I truly believe you can have calmer peaceful, more sane evenings um, without feeling like you're just both, you know, soldiering it out in the trenches every single evening. So thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. Hope to see you Friday. Bye.